Warren here from Hammer Fab. We're day four on uh, 57 Chris Craft Sportsman. We've got the old tow rig out today. Uh, 1958 Apache that we built here at Hammer Fab. So anyways, it's uh, you know, it's we're not literally going to pull this thing around too much, but I did put a trailer hitch on it for days like today. So got the boat out. It's a nice cool day this morning. It's only supposed to be like 75 or 77. So we were going to stay in the back of the boat. But I found out a crucial piece of information that we need to wait on. So we kept trying to figure out, well, what do we do about the seams or the cracks on the side of the, of the hole? <clears throat> you know, these, these cracks are kind of unsightly and this is, this is supposed to be the most beautiful part of the boat. And so I don't really want those cracks, but I wasn't sure what product to use in there. You know, should it be flexible? Should it be rigid? How do you get the color to match the stain and all that kind of stuff? So I was watching some videos again from Snake Mountain Boat Works. And uh, those guys got a lot of good information. But, man, it took me a while to figure out what they were using on there. And I finally found a video where they suggested using Thixoflex. Or no, not Thixoflex, Thixo Wood. And so it's an epoxy that gets hard and you can sand it but you can also mix in your stain with the epoxy so that when it goes in the crack, it matches everything. So we need to, I just ordered that stuff and we need to wait for that stuff to arrive. So what we decided was we're gonna hold off on staining the back. We got it bleached, but uh, we need to neutralize the bleach with some water. And while we're waiting on the, the Thixo wood to show up, we're going to strip the sides using some paint stripper and then sand it, block sand them straight and everything and bleach them and get them ready for the same stage as the back and then we'll just do them all, do it all at once. But before we strip this side, we need to make a pattern off of this tape line. So this is where our aluminum is gonna come up to. And basically above the, I think they call this the bootstripe. Above this, so we're upside down. So above this is basically just going to be like a cosmetic flashing i mean it will be serving some purpose back there by sealing off some seams but up here it's going to turn into kind of a bull nose and we're going to do some maybe some fancy dimples or something where the screws might go or something like that and then that'll turn into the hole <clears throat> so what we need to do first while i've got that tape on there i kind of i like where it's at and so we need to make a paper pattern off of that tape line so that we can transfer that shape to the big sheets of aluminum that we have. All right, so some of the supplies that we need to do this paper pattern are scissors, pencil, masking tape, and I've got some thumbtacks here. Um, so first we gotta kinda get the paper up there and stick it to the wood, and then we'll come back through and trim it off and chase it and get it nice and tidy to, to the wood, and then we'll transfer it. I'm gonna grab a couple thumbtacks here, and we're gonna push these right through the paper into the wood not really the best time to be doing a paper pattern when it's sprinkling outside <clears throat> who knew this forecast did not say any precipitation wait we're not long enough there man yeah when you pulled it tight i oh, guess for crying out loud man sinks boat with thumbtacks yeah that's what i'm gonna title this video yeah <laughs> that'd be good <laughs> okay now we just want to get it kind of nice and taut through here. Now I'm putting the tacks right now, I'm putting them in this boot stripe so it doesn't matter. You're not going to see those holes later because there's a piece of trim that goes over it. We're going to probably remove those tacks and all we want to do is chase this up into that crack. Okay. You good with that? Yeah. So you need me to... No, you're good. I got okay. it. So I'm going to put a tack right there and then put another one right there. Okay, now I gotta come back here and I gotta take this one. So the key is to make sure that this paper is very form fit. Yes, very form fit, very, very. Because, you know, this paper is kind of flexible and it's, well, especially when you get something this long that's that skinny, it's gonna wanna flex this way. And we don't want it to because when we transfer it to the aluminum, 
we once it becomes rigid we don't have the opportunity to really get it back I mean we can a little bit with our equipment here but the goal is to nail it the first time so could put the tacks in here like that I guess the holes you know they're not really going to be big enough to hurt anything okay so now what you can do is we can we're going to use this other half up on the front so I really just need to trim it like right here for now I'm just going to leave it leave it excess So this butcher paper is nice because you can kind of see through it, see? When I push down on it, you can see the tape. Okay, so now what we do, we're not worried about that one right now. I'm gonna take some tape. And now that I've got it nice and taut right there, I can put some tape here to keep that in place. And that way we're not using tacks everywhere. So I'm, I've been kind of learning the nomenclature of a boat here lately. I'll be honest, I'm not real familiar with all that. So supposedly this is the boot strike. It's a boot stripe. Um, and then I've been uh, learning starboard mm -hmm. and port mm -hmm. and all the different sections of a boat. You know, usually when we're working on cars, we're talking about Driver side, passenger side. Well, it's a little different when you're doing both, so. Especially learning it while the boat's upside down, that can be challenging too. Because everything's kind of opposite. Since we're over here on the port side? Yeah. Yes, exactly. We are on the port side. See, even the cameraman knew that. So we give Eric a hard time sometimes. <laughs> You know, just a cameraman. <laughs> but we joke about that because he was telling me some stories where he'd be filming someplace and uh, he'll offer some advice to the experts at hand. And they'll say, what do you know? You're just a cameraman. And he'll be like, yeah, you're right. And they actually, Eric actually has a wealth of information, especially when it comes to sanding wooden boats. <laughs> right? <laughs> I would say my expertise is in watching people. Watching so. people sand wooden boats. It's all about perspective. When you're watching somebody make a mistake <laughs> well, and dig their own grave, sometimes you choose to say something and then sometimes you choose not to. Well, depending you, on would the you person. admit though, you have gotten yourself in situations where you, you volunteered yourself and then come to find out you were, you were pretty good at that and then that's all you ended up doing? Yeah, it's usually sanding. Sanding or buffing? Sanding or buffing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Eric told me he was good at sanding wood. I said, perfect, I got a project for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's not a house. Yeah. Uh-oh, see? Now what I did here was I, I kind of, see how my pa pattern's almost gone? Not a big deal, but uh, it could be a big deal. So I just need to kind of steer the uh, paper a little bit right here. This is where it becomes tricky on patterning. I mean, I don't know. I, I almost think it needs to... Well, we can split it right here somewhere. Yeah, we were going to split it right here anyway, so we're good. So I don't really want any wrinkles down here. I want this to maintain perfect flatness the whole way down here. See how this, this needs to stay flat. Like that. Now stick it down. Okay. Now stick it down, and then we'll do. We'll split the pattern right there. We're not going to split the aluminum, but the pattern will be easier to manage if it's in two pieces. Right there, where that seam is. So I'll just leave it. Leave it long for now. Get some of this stuff out of the way. good videos about doing boat restoration but I will say Snake Mountain Boat Works has got some real good ones and they're they're actually like they are actually willing to show you some of their techniques which is pretty cool so the reason we keep this butcher paper around the shop here for metal work is it's perfect for making patterns like this especially flexible 
compound curve kind of patterns because you can see through it and it conforms to shapes really good so like you can see right here well like right here i can cur i can get it all the way up in there like that and then you can actually just roll it over like that and make a real nice tight pattern and then you can record where your your lines need to be Okay, now, got that pretty tight in that corner. Now I'm gonna take a pencil. A pencil and gently, we don't wanna pierce the paper. We're just gonna gently draw a line right in that crease. where the aluminum is going to end. So we're going to leave the bootstripe exposed. We're going to go aluminum, bootstripe, aluminum. And the, the bootstripe gets a piece of stainless trim on it. Or it might be brass. I think it's brass. Chrome plated brass. I don't know. Maybe it's stainless. I, have to, I haven't looked into it that far yet. point is there's going to be very minimal wood showing right there um, and the reason I decided to do that instead of laminating all that with aluminum is because that would be really difficult that on that long of a piece to get the curvature just right and the this bootstripe is sealed very well on both sides like there's no rot there's no really anything and by the time we get a bunch of varnish and everything on there it's going to be it's going to be fine. Sprinkling more now. Let's see if we can uh, get this done before we wreck our pattern. Dang, man. Might have to go inside. It's really starting to come down now. All right, now I'm going to mark right here on the top of this tape. So that's where you want it to come up to? Yeah. Okay. Dang. Yeah, we're gonna have to pull this inside. All right, we had to move inside here for a little bit, so bear with us on the lighting. But it was sprinkling out a little bit, so we backed it in the shop real quick. And uh, we're gonna finish getting this paper pattern done, and hopefully the the weather clears up a little bit. I think it will, it's not supposed to rain today. So some of the things we need to record are this back edge. So I'm just kind of folding it around that corner and then I'll probably just put some pencil marks there just in case. That's where the end of the aluminum is gonna be. Okay, and then up there, make sure we got that. Okay, now we're just gonna make a series of dotted lines right on top of that tape. You wanna make sure that corner's up in there when you do that. So we gotta make sure, cause that distance changes if it's not. I mean, we could almost do that. Yeah, let's do that. We're just, um, I can feel the tape through the paper. I'm just gently tracing on top of the tape. That works better. That way we're taking out some guesswork. See, it's gonna get really thin right here and that's because we want it to, we want it to have the appearance of the aluminum crossing over onto here. You know, kind of like they did with the paint schemes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this piece here, let's see, how am I gonna do that? Um, well, probably what I'll do This this piece is this bullnose piece is gonna have to be a separate piece. 
because what I, what I want it to do is I want it to basically, I want the bull nose piece to basically kind of kind of end right here and it'll go, it'll go over the boot stripe and then something like that and then it'll turn into this. So that piece is going to be like. So the bull nose is going to go, can, it's going to connect to the aluminum bottom. Yeah, so this will go on first. Uh huh. And I think it could still be this shape all the way to the top. That way we maintain consistent thickness. Uh huh. And then we'll do a separate pattern for the the bull nose cover. That that it'll be a piece one so, one piece that goes around both sides. And that's gonna be something that we have to like shape with our equipment. Maybe maybe weld it in the center to get two two halves. And then it'll just go on there like. That'd be pretty sick. And then it'll go like it'll literally form around this, kind of like that. It'll look kind of like that right there. And then just shh, it'll be all compound shaped and real, real fluid dynamic. So my point in saying that is, is see right here, the the very front of this hole is kind of squared off right there. So it's squared off, and then it it it's squared off all the way to here. Well, that looks kind of dumb. Looks like a piece of wood. You know, squared off piece wood. of wood. Yeah, it is a piece of wood. So originally there was a piece of trim right there that went all the way down there. Well, we're not going to be using that piece of trim anymore. We're going to replace it by capping this whole front off. And this this whole ugly little thing right here, that's all going to be surrounded with aluminum that's real smooth looking. My point is, I, I, we're only going to make this piece to this edge right here. That first flat edge. So... The whole goal here is to make it look as cool as possible without having to make it complex to make. Which means keep it flat. All right, we are final trimming our pattern here. Figured we'd do it inside where it's, where it's not windy. And then uh, we'll, we'll check and see if it's not raining out. We've got our aluminum sheets outside because they're so stinking huge. So. If we can, we'll transfer these shapes right to the aluminum so I don't, uh, you know, because you really, this, this pattern is fragile. You don't want it sitting around too long because if it gets wrinkled up or if it shrinks because of humidity or something like that, it gets destroyed and then you got to do it all over again. So if we can get it transferred to our metal right away, that way it's kind of like locked in stone and then all we have to do is come back and cut it. You want to tell people what you're doing here? I'm um, just using a razor blade right here up in the crack and trimming it. It's, you know, that edge isn't going to be perfect. It's going to be all jig joggy, but we'll straighten that out in the aluminum. I figured this would be easier to manage than trying to get that whole floppy noodle involved with some scissors. That wouldn't, that would be a mess. Okay, we got the side pattern. Now we're working on the back. Stern, I think they call this. Is that right? Stern? Okay. So anyways, we're going to do a piece of aluminum across the back here as well. So we've got another piece of butcher paper. Now this one's going to be easier because it's flat and um, it's larger. So it won't flex as much on us. So basically, right here, you can kind of see where the exhaust port comes through. And so it has a flange that goes on it about that big. And then this water line is gonna end up right above that flange. So what we're gonna do is transfer the side shape. We're gonna transfer this shape of our aluminum side piece right onto the back so that that line goes all the way around the boat. Okay, so now the tricky part here is we don't have this laid out on the other side and we're not going to. We're just gonna make this pattern and turn it into two pieces of aluminum and then when we put the aluminum on, they'll, they should be the same. So in order to get this line correct on the back, what we'll have to do is figure out the distance from here to here. So let me trim some of this off. So what we're gonna do is take a distance from here, measurement from there to there, and transfer that measurement to that side and that'll be our point that we and then we'll just connect the two dots on the back for our straight line okay so right here we just we're gonna do our pencil mark trim this edge
Actually, this one, we can do this right here. Trim it. We'll just, well, that didn't work real good. It could. Yeah, there we go. That works pretty good. Just trimming the back edge right there. And then right there is where that needs to be. Now I can see that mark through the paper right here. And so now I need to go get a tape measure. Okay, and then what we want to do is wrap it over the edge here because this aluminum is going to have a flange right there. So that's where the flange needs to end. And then right there. And then we also need to mark where it needs to bend. So it needs to bend like right there. Right there, it's flat. So it's pretty much flat, flat, and flat. So it's like three shapes there. So we're gonna need to trim, we're gonna have to slice this piece of aluminum in order to get it. We're gonna bend these two flanges, but because the boat is kinked, we can't just bend it all in one bend. So we have to do one bend, two bends, three bends. Okay, so that one's gonna be like right there. And then that one will start right there and, and end up over there. All right, here we go. We are transferring this measurement from, we're gonna start on this very top corner of the boat down to there. And look at that, it's eight inches. Well, pretty much exactly eight inches. That's what we're gonna go with. So then we we'll just come over here and do the same thing. And we mark eight inches right there. And now I gotta go get a big straight edge and we'll just run that across there. And hold that right up to that line and don't move it. You, you gotta move it on the line there. It's got to be oh. right. Are you got it? Yeah, right on the line. Right on the line? Right on the line. Is that yeah. on the is that on the line enough for you right there? Yeah. Okay. You got it? Don't move. Here we go. We're gonna trace that edge. And see that puts it right above the flange for the exhaust. So let's go ahead and trace that on there too, because we have to put that hole in it. It'd be easier to do before it's bonded to the boat. So we'll get a circle template out and find the exact center of that so we can use a hole saw. So I don't have any hole punches that big. And then we need a hole right there. Right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna write some notes on here. All right, B-O-S, that means bend other side. B-O-S, this is the outside. See, especially when you put something like that on there that makes it asymmetrical, you wanna make sure you're, put, you're putting this on on the right side. Um, and then I'll write cut, 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 cut call those idiot marks because sometimes I can be an idiot and just forget about it. You don't want to forget about important details. All right, I'm going to rough cut this first. So, this 
gonna pin that bottom edge down a little bit and then I wanna I wanna just I always like to check things. Don't don't always rely on measurements, okay? Measurements are good starting point, but it has to look right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull this taut again, put a tack in it. I'm gonna do a, do a couple of them right here. So these these tacks are gonna get covered with aluminum. So it's okay to put those right there. We're gonna bond this panel on there with some uh, West Systems epoxy. It's called G Flex. Okay, so I want that nice and tight so that I can come back here and look at it. And it should look parallel to that seam right below it. And it looks pretty good. It looks. So you always want to confirm things like that because especially like when building cars, um, you know, a lot of this stuff is handmade and it's not perfect side to side, but this is pretty close. I mean, these plugs aren't necessarily in the exact same spot, so you can't go off of those either because see these three are different. But let's let's measure from here to that seam and see how close it is. Just to confirm that our pattern is correct. So that's like four and five eighths to the middle of that seam. And it's slightly, it's like a little bit more than four and five eighths over there. But that's, I'd, I'd call that close enough. We're within but, a sixteenth of an inch, huh? But also your seam could be. The seam could be crooked too. Yeah, this board could be crooked. I mean, a sixteenth of an inch, I'm okay with that. Especially on a wooden boat that's 63 years old. I mean, for only changing a sixteenth of an inch, being that old. I know some old people that have shrunk They would a love lot, that. Shrunk a lot more than that. Or whatever <laughs> I'm sure I probably I'm gonna start shrinking when I get old yeah, too I'm already shrinking <laughs> Try not to scratch it because every scratch we put in it makes it that much more harder to polish and more likely to crack okay it is still sprinkling a little bit but not much i think we can still tape to the metal so we're gonna go get we'll start with the rear pattern and put it out here and then we'll trace it you know what i mean i don't want to yeah see i'm glad i didn't do that okay okay go ahead and like rotate it this way that way Yeah, we're gonna have to start taping it down here. Okay. Can you bring me that tape? Yellow one? Yeah. Can I roll it to me? <laughs> you scratched it up already. <laughs> oh. 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 got our patterns made and transferred to the aluminum but it's still sprinkling outside a little bit so we're gonna strip this varnish on this side inside the shop so we've got both bay doors open to kind of keep some airflow through here um, so now we can take this tape off of the, the side here and we've got some aircraft 
stripper paint remover that we're going to use on the side here we've already stripped the other side um, yesterday and it worked really well we tried some other stuff from a local hardware store it was really cheap it didn't even do anything um, but that stuff works pretty good so um, we're gonna we're gonna basically tag team this and we'll apply some and th what I found with this aircraft stripper is if you just use a razor blade scraper and not don't push it because it'll gouge the wood but drag it and like basically scrape it off by dragging it while it's still somewhat moist that seems to work the best if you let it dry out it doesn't work real good and then on that side there was quite a bit of varnish on there there's probably two or three layers of varnish let's show them because there's yeah there's quite a bit on here yeah that... there's a lot on here so there's some spots that are runny and you know over here we've got it, most of it stripped off like this is bare wood right here mm. and there's still a little bit of varnish on there but this is basically we're just trying to minimize the amount of sandpaper we have to go through to get down to bare wood again so we got almost all of it i got the bootstrap and this here stripped forget what they call this one. Oh yeah and the one on the top that's the keel but anyways basically we want to strip it from here to here and we're going to bleach all of this and we're going to do all the and then stain it all at once so i mean this side stripped down really well there was no surprises underneath everything everything looks pretty the wood's pretty decent we do have some splits that we're going to use we're going to uh we're going to fill using the thixo wood epoxy we got that stuff on the way and then uh so, but we're not gonna be doing any sanding right now because it's too dusty to do in here, but we are gonna go ahead and get the other side caught up to this stage. And then next time we, we can roll it outside, we'll sand the sides, thick so wood it, all the seams, and then uh, bleach, the, well, we'll bleach this first and then thick so wood it. And then, uh, then we'll be ready to stain it. It's quite a bit of work there's all these different stages and you got to get them just right in order if you do them out of order you totally jack it up so we don't want to do that so we got our patterns made we got them laid out on the aluminum so we don't need this anymore you want to get a cool shot of that like This stuff is really nasty looking. I mean, it's, I don't think it's supposed to be brown like that. I think that might be from rusting out the bottom of the can, because it's kind of corrosive. Um, but this stuff smells good. I mean, back in the day, they used to have, they used to have, so, you know, before they put too many regulations on this stuff, it was like really, really good. Um, but this stuff still works pretty good, but you want to have the doors open or do it outside, because it will, fog you out so we're gonna apply it pretty pretty liberally yeah see it's already peeling up the top it took about 10 seconds you don't really want this dripping on the floor I mean it, it doesn't drip really easy but if you do get some on the floor on a painted floor or something you know it, it would strip your floor but, um, you know, we're not gonna get it on the floor.
Well, man, I think that's enough for today. We did some stripping on the side here with some aircraft stripper, got most of the varnish off. I mean, that stuff is on there good, but the reason we did that is because last time on the back, we did we just tried sanding it. It took forever to sand it off, so we figured this will speed up the sanding process. And as you can see on the ground there, we got quite a bit of stuff off. I mean, there was probably at least three layers of, of you know, different varnishes applied at different time frames. And I think we even stripped off the original varnish. I mean, it's pretty pretty decent looking underneath all that. And I'm pleased that we got good, work, good wood to start with. And uh, it's got a few lumps in it, but I think we can block sand them out and get the, the sides of this hole really nice and straight. So we're going to do some cleaning up here and then we'll see you guys next week.